Houston, we have a pulse from a ghost. In a move that has stunned the space community and defied all odds, NASA engineers have just pulled off an honest-to-God miracle. Its main steering thrusters were dying, threatening to silence this ancient wanderer for good. Let expose what this jaw-dropping save means for humanity's farthest ever reach into the cosmic unknown. Let's rewind the clock. Way back in 1977, before most of today's tech giants even existed, NASA launched two plucky robot explorers, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. Their mission? A grand tour of the outer solar system, a once-in-a-lifetime planetary alignment that allowed them to slingshot from one gas giant to the next. This wasn't just ambitious, it was an act of pure American audacity, built with slide rules, grit, and computers less powerful than your damn smartwatch. Voyager 1, launched in September 1977, shortly after its twin, Voyager 2, which actually launched first in August 1977, was tasked with giving humanity its first close-up. Mind-blowing looks at Jupiter and Saturn, and boy, did it deliver! It showed us Jupiter's swirling great red spot, a storm bigger than Earth, and its bizarre volcanic moon Io, literally vomiting sulfur into space. At Saturn, it unveiled the stunning complexity of its rings, and gave us our first detailed views of its giant, hazy moon, Titan. Voyager 2 went even further, becoming the only spacecraft ever to visit the ice giants Uranus and Neptune, revealing their strange magnetic fields and icy moons. But these little probes, built with the best tech the 1970s could offer, were designed to last maybe five, ten years at most. Nobody, not even the brilliant minds at JPL, dreamed they'd still be phoning home almost half a century later. Once their planetary mission was done, they weren't retired. They were given a new, even grander objective, to become humanity's first emissaries to interstellar space. The vast, uncharted ocean between the stars each carries a golden record, a kind of cosmic time capsule with sounds and images of Earth, a message in a bottle for any ET that might find them millions of years from now. In August 2012, Voyager 1 punched through the heliopause, the boundary where the sun's solar wind gives way to the true interstellar medium, officially becoming the first human-made object to enter interstellar space. Voyager 2 followed in November 2018. These aren't just spacecraft, they are extensions of human curiosity, our farthest eyes and ears traveling where nothing built by human hands has ever gone before. Keeping these 1970s relics alive across 15 billion miles for Voyager 1 and 13 billion miles for Voyager 2 is a daily battle against impossible odds. That so far, it takes a radio signal traveling at the speed of light over 23 hours just to make a one-way trip to Voyager 1. Imagine sending an email and waiting two full days for the reply. That's what NASA engineers face. And then there's the power. The Voyagers run on radioisotope thermoelectric generators, or RTGs, essentially nuclear batteries that use the heat from decaying plutonium-238 to generate electricity. But like all batteries, they fade. Each year, their power output drops by about 4 watts. As of early 2025, they're running on fumes, forcing NASA to make heartbreaking choices, shutting down science instruments one by one, even turning off vital heaters for other components just to keep the core systems, and that all-important antenna, alive. What's been sacrificed on Voyager 1 to save power? Several plasma science instruments, cosmic ray detectors, and imaging systems have been powered down over the years. And the scares? They've been relentless. Just recently, in 2022 and 2023, Voyager 1 started sending back gibberish, word salad, data from its attitude articulation and control system, the system that keeps its antenna pointed at Earth. For months, JPL engineers were mystified, fearing the worst. They finally traced it to a single faulty memory chip corrupted after decades of cosmic ray bombardment. The fix? A brilliant software patch, essentially teaching the AACS to ignore the bad chip. A remote brain surgery performed across billions of miles on a computer with less memory than a car key fob. This recent thruster crisis is just the latest in a long line of 
miracle saves that have kept these ancient explorers talking. So, what exactly was this new, potentially mission-ending crisis? It all comes down to tiny, precision-firing thrusters. These aren't the big rockets that got Voyager off Earth. These are small hydrazine thrusters, just puffs of gas, used to make minute adjustments to the spacecraft's orientation. Or, attitude. Why is this so critical? Voyager, one's main high-gain antenna, its lifeline to Earth, needs to be pointed, exactly, at our planet. If it drifts even a tiny fraction of a degree off target over those 15 billion miles, the already faint signal will be lost forever in the cosmic noise. No more data, no more commands, Voyager 1 goes silent, a ghost ship, drifting eternally. The immediate problem was with the set of thrusters currently responsible for these critical roll maneuvers. Think of it like keeping a spinning top perfectly balanced. The fuel lines for these thrusters, which themselves are a backup set that have been in use since 2004, were showing signs of clogging from residue buildup after decades of operation. If they failed completely, Voyager 1 would lose its ability to make these fine-tuned roll adjustments, its antenna would drift, and that would be it. Game over. But here's where it gets truly complicated and terrifying. The original, primary roll thrusters on Voyager 1 had, already, failed way back in 2004. Why? Two tiny internal heaters, essential for keeping the hydrazine fuel in those thrusters from freezing or causing dangerous pressure spikes if fired cold, lost power. At the time, engineers figured these heaters were toast, unfixable from billions of miles away. So, in 2004, they switched to the backup roll thrusters. Now, 20 years later, in early 2025, those backups were starting to die. And adding to the insane pressure, NASA's Deep Space Network Antenna DSS-43 in Canberra, Australia, the only dish on Earth powerful enough to send commands to the distant voyagers, was scheduled to go offline for months of critical upgrades starting May 4, 2025. If they didn't fix Voyager 1 before that deadline, they'd lose their chance, possibly forever. The clock was ticking loudly. Operation Zombie Thruster With the current backup roll thrusters sputtering, and the DSN deadline looming like a guillotine, the Voyager team at JPL did what they do best. They started brainstorming the impossible. They went back to the 2004 failure of the original primary roll thrusters. What if those heaters weren't actually broken? What if, as one engineer theorized, some cosmic ray hit or an unexpected power surge in the spacecraft's ancient circuits had simply flipped a switch, cutting power to those heaters? If they could find a way to flip that switch back, remotely, across 15 billion miles, they might, just might, be able to bring those 20-year dormant primary roll thrusters back from the dead to serve as a new backup for the currently failing backup thrusters. Are you following this? It's a mind-bender. The risk was almost unthinkable. To test their theory, they'd have to command Voyager 1 to turn on those original primary roll thrusters, thrusters that hadn't uttered a peep since 2004, thrusters whose fuel lines could be brittle or clogged, and then try to fire up their supposedly dead heaters. Here's the nightmare scenario. Voyager 1 uses its star tracker, a sensitive camera, to lock onto a guide star like Canopus, to know which way it's pointing. If, during this delicate resurrection attempt, the Star Tracker drifted too far off its guide star, while those primary roll thruster heaters were still cold and offline, the spacecraft's onboard safety programming would automatically command the dormant thrusters to fire to try and reorient itself. Firing thrusters with potentially frozen fuel lines or non-operational heaters, that could trigger a catastrophic pressure spike a fuel line rupture, maybe even a small explosion that could cripple the spacecraft or send it tumbling wildly, mission over, in the worst possible way. The JPL team, a mix of grizzled veterans who've worked on Voyager since its launch and brilliant younger engineers, had to devise a high-wire act. They needed to send commands to, slightly, misalign the Star Tracker just enough to allow the test without triggering an immediate uncontrolled thrust of firing while simultaneously trying to coax those ancient heaters back to life. And through all this, they faced that agonizing 23-hour wait for their commands to reach Voyager 1. 
and another 23 hours for any telemetry, any sign of success or failure, to crawl its way back to Earth. If their gamble failed, Voyager 1 could already be dead or dying in the interstellar darkness for nearly a full day before they even got the bad news. The tension at JPL must have been unbearable. Then came the 20th of March, 2025, or thereabouts, when the crucial telemetry arrived back on Earth after the commands were sent. Picture the scene at JPL. Engineers huddled around consoles, coffee cups growing cold, eyes glued to screens displaying cryptic lines of data from a tiny spacecraft farther away than any human object has ever been. They had sent their audacious commands almost two days prior. Now they waited. Had they saved their interstellar wanderer, or had they accidentally killed it? The seconds must have felt like eons. And then, the data streamed in. Within 20 minutes of the signal being acquired, the telemetry showed it. The temperatures of the heaters on those original primary roll thrusters, the ones dormant since 2004, the ones everyone thought were gone forever, began to soar. Asterisk, they were back online. The commands had worked. The zombie thrusters had roared back to life. It was such a glorious moment. Team morale was very high that day, confessed Todd Barber, the mission's incredibly proud propulsion lead at JPL. These thrusters were considered dead, and that was a legitimate conclusion. It's just that one of our engineers had this insight that maybe there was this other possible cause, and it was fixable. It was yet another miracle, save for Voyager. Kareem Badaruddin, the Voyager mission manager at JPL, put it perfectly. I think at that time, in 2004, the team was okay with accepting that the primary roll thrusters didn't work, because they had a perfectly good backup. And, frankly, they probably didn't think the Voyagers were going to keep going for another 20 years. Well, Mr. Badarudin, these magnificent machines, and the wizards who tend them, have a habit of shattering expectations. This incredible save wouldn't have been possible without another unsung hero of space exploration, NASA's Deep Space Network. This global network of giant radio antennas, located in Goldstone, California, Madrid, Spain, and Canberra, Australia, is Earth's lifeline to spacecraft venturing into the solar system and beyond. For the Voyagers, with their incredibly faint signals, one antenna is particularly crucial. Deep Space Station 43, DSS 43, in Canberra. This absolute monster of a dish, 230 feet wide, is the only one in the DSN equipped with an S-band transmitter powerful enough, and operating on the right frequency, to send commands out to the immense distances where the Voyagers now roam. The other DSN sites can listen to Voyager, but only Canberra can talk to it effectively. And DSS-43 itself was the source of that terrifying May 4, 2025 deadline. It was scheduled to go offline for nearly a year, from May 2025 through February 2026, with only brief operational periods planned for August and December 2025 for critical upgrades. As Suzanne Dodd, Voyager project manager and director of the Interplanetary Network at JPL, explained, these antenna upgrades are important for future crewed lunar landings, and they also increase communications capacity for our science missions in deep space some of which are building on the discoveries Voyager made. The Voyager team knew they had to get this thruster fix done before DSS-43 went silent, or they'd lose their chance to intervene if the current backup thrusters gave up the ghost completely during the communications blackout. The DSN is constantly being upgraded, a never-ending race to hear fainter whispers from farther away, and sometimes even heroes need a pit stop. You might be asking, why pour so much effort, so much brain power, so much stress into keeping these nearly 50-year-old probes alive? They're running on fumes, their instruments are failing, they're practically antiques. The answer is simple. The Voyagers are doing science that no other spacecraft in human history has ever done or will likely do again for many decades. They are our only direct samplers, our only robotic scouts in the true interstellar medium the actual stuff between the stars, beyond the protective bubble of our sun's influence. The heliosphere. What are they telling us from out there, 15 billion miles away? They are measuring the density and temperature of interstellar plasma, 
analyzing the composition of interstellar cosmic rays, which are mostly shielded from us by the heliosphere, and mapping the strength and direction of the interstellar magnetic field. This is brand new territory, fundamental data that is revolutionizing our understanding of our solar system's neighborhood within the Milky Way galaxy and how stars interact with their surrounding galactic environment. Losing Voyager 1 or 2 wouldn't just be sad, it would be like blinding ourselves just as we're about to see something truly new and wondrous. There are no other interstellar probes coming anytime soon. This is our only shot, for now, to touch the stars. Generations of wizards keeping the dream alive. This entire saga is, at its heart, a profoundly human story. The Voyager mission team at JPL isn't just a collection of engineers and scientists. They are custodians of a legend. Some of them are veterans, brilliant minds, who were there in the heady days of the 1970s, when Voyager was first conceived and launched, who have dedicated their entire careers to these intrepid explorers. Others are younger engineers, inheriting this incredible legacy, bringing fresh eyes and new techniques to bear on seemingly impossible problems. They work with computer systems and programming languages from the disco era, we're talking custom-built computers with mere kilobytes of memory, a world away from today's supercomputers. Yet, they find ways. They write elegant code. They devise ingenious workarounds. They understand these spacecraft almost intuitively, like old friends. The recent data glitch, the thruster revival, these aren't just technical fixes, they are acts of profound dedication, of a deep emotional connection to these robotic pioneers. This isn't just a job for the Voyager team, it's a passion, a multi-generational quest to keep humanity's farthest emissaries talking, to keep that faint whisper from interstellar space alive for as long as humanly possible. They are, as Bill Nelson said, true wizards. But even wizards can't defy the laws of physics forever. The relentless decay of the plutonium-238 in Voyager 1 and 2's radioisotope thermoelectric generators means their power supply dwindles by about 4 watts every single year. As of early 2025, they are operating on a razor's edge. With engineers having to make increasingly painful decisions about which instruments or heaters to turn off to conserve every precious watt for core operations and that all-important communication link, how many science instruments are even left running on Voyager 1 now? Very few. The priority is plasma science, magnetic fields, and charged particle detection, the key measurements for interstellar space. But even these will eventually fall silent. What are the next tough choices looming for the power management team? Will they have to start cycling instruments on and off, getting only intermittent data? Beyond power, there's the sheer age of the components. These spacecraft have endured almost half a century in the harsh radiation environment of space. Electronic components degrade. Mechanical parts, if any were still moving, would have seized up long ago. Thankfully, the Voyagers are largely solid state now, apart from tape recorders they no longer use. When does simple hardware fatigue become the insurmountable final hurdle? Every day, as Todd Barber and Kareem Badaruddin admit, could truly be their last, yet, they persevere. And what is their ultimate fate? Long after they fall silent, perhaps in the late 2020s or early 2030s, the Voyagers will continue their journey, silently drifting through the vastness of the Milky Way galaxy for millions, perhaps billions, of years, carrying that golden record, humanity's most distant, most enduring message to the cosmos. It brings to mind former NASA administrator Bill Nelson's poignant letter, urging that NASA's mission must transcend the length of a single administration. Voyager is the ultimate embodiment of that ideal, a mission that has outlasted presidents, generations, and all earthly expectations. What part of this nearly 50-year space mission blows your mind the most? Like, subscribe, and drop your thoughts below.